everyone's passwords are terrible and they should change their passwords right now. We'll be, well, let's just, just get that right out in the open. Okay, you all have bad passwords and you know you should feel bad. Probably not necessarily people who watch Computer File, but the majority of the public don't have good passwords and it's a real problem. It's a problem because people like LinkedIn and TalkTalk Talk get hacked and a bunch of hashed passwords go out onto the internet um, and then within you know hours, half of them have been cracked and then people are going, oh, well, this username and this password's been cracked. Well, let's just go and log on over there and see if that username and password combination gets me into their Amazon. Oh, it does. That's good news. And, and so on. Password cracking has massive implications for password security, uh, for what passwords you need to use, how you need to store your passwords, and so on and so forth. In a previous video, Tom Scott talked about how to store passwords. Please, 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 please look up a recent tutorial for the language you're using as a company, right? That, these things are still true, right? The hashing algorithms that you have to use have become longer because they don't hold up as well, the older ones, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, and um, so some things have changed, but really the principle remains the same, right? We don't store passwords unencrypted in a database because that's a terrible, terrible idea. What we do is we pass them through something called a one-way pseudo-random function, which basically takes some plain text password and turns it into gibberish. And then, when someone tries to log in, we do the same operation on what they've just typed, and if the gibberish matches up, we know they've typed in their password correctly without actually having to know what their password is. But if these hashes get dumped on the internet, then we can't reverse them because they're just random nonsense. But what we can do is test a load of different words by hashing them and seeing if the hashes, ma hashes match any of the ones in the dictionary. And if they do, we know we've cracked their password. Um, and that's really, really easy to do. I'm going to show you it, and it's, I mean, it scared me the first time. Um, so, yeah, let's see. I've changed all my passwords since then, put it that way. Uh, okay, now this is, well, it's an SSH terminal, but this is Beast, right? the aptly named Beast, which is our deep learning, one of our deep learning servers. Right? Now, I'm not using it for deep learning right now, and nor is anyone else, I don't think. So, just for a moment, we'll borrow it. It's about two or three times bigger than a normal desktop, but it's not server size rack. Um, and it's sitting somewhere behind a bunch of locks. I think on this floor somewhere. I haven't seen it. Well, I, I saw it getting built and then, I, and then it disappeared. Um, maybe we'll go and look at it sometime. So if we, if we type in, uh, in NVIDIA SMI, we can see what's, what this is equipped with. For now, my, most of my contact with it is via terminal and I ask it to do things and it does them very, very fast. This particular server has four Titan X graphics cards in it. A Titan X is one of the foremost graphics cards. There are new generation 10 NVIDIA graphics cards coming out and some AMD cards, but a Titan X is still performing massively well. Um, certainly for deep learning, it's very good because it has 12 gig of onboard RAM. Now, in some games, 12 gig of onboard RAM might be necessary for really high texture resolution. So if I wanted to play, you know, the new Doom game, and there was no one about, then I could. Apart from they've installed Ubuntu on it, so that doesn't help me much. It might be Fedora. Uh, let's not go into that though. So suffice to say, it's Linux, right? And we've installed Cafe and other deep learning libraries and lots of people are using it all the time to do interesting deep learning problems. We've got a huge array of different problems. But right now, we'll use it to do some password cracking. I've downloaded a program called um, CUDA Hashcat. Hashcat is one of the sort of foremost password cracking tools. It lets you do lots of different types of password cracking, which I'll talk about. Um, and it does it very, very quickly because it makes use of a graphics card. Or in this computer's case, it makes use of all four graphics cards in parallel. Each of these graphics cards is capable of somewhere around, um, I think it's 10,000 million, so 10 billion hashes per second. My standard graphics card at home, which is pretty good, is about 4 billion. So these are nearly two times faster each, and there's four of them. Okay, so this is over eight times faster, let's say about 10 times faster than my computer at home. It takes 40 billion plain text password hypotheses, hashes them using MD5 and compares them to a list at a rate of 40 billion per second. And how many words are in just the English dictionary? More than you'd think, a lot more than you'd think, which is in some cases reassuring, in other cases if your password is not very long, not reassuring at all. Okay. So, We'll talk about the different, I'll show you it working, and I'll talk about the different kinds of password cracking, because they do have implica different implications for passwords. Okay, so Hashcat is run off a command line. Um, what I've got here, if I just show it, this example file is just a list of hashes that comes with Hashcat. There's about six or so thousand hashes in it. 
that range in difficulty. So some of them are going to be password one, because that's what some people's passwords are, and some of them are going to be much longer, sort of 20 or 30 characters of almost random, um, and they're going to be very difficult to crack. So we won't crack all of them now, but we'll crack a fair few. So if I just show you this, these are what the hashes look like. MD5 produces a 128-bit hash. Now, MD5 should not be used by anyone ever, ever again, right? Um, the problem is that, that lower um, standard hashes like MD5 and SHA-1 still get used a lot for back-end storage. Maybe the developers are thinking, well, it's already in SHA-1, you know, it's a lot of effort to, to convert them all over, maybe people won't be able to log in for a while. Mm, let's probably not. Yes, do. Change your hashes to something like SHA-512 really quickly, because this is not acceptable. Hashing that takes longer literally just takes longer for the GPU to process. And so you will go down from 40 billion to, you know, a few million or a few thousand for really good hashing that's been iterated a lot of times. And that makes the process insurmountably harder, you know, much more difficult. Um, you know, and so that, that would be what I would recommend as a developer. As a user, it just means you have to have a password that's, that's acceptable. But you have to, in a way, assume that some of the websites you use won't know what they're doing and will have it stored in MD5. If it's stored in plain text, then all bets are off, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> okay, right, so let's just run this um, in brute force mode. So the first type of password cracking, which sees some use but not a lot, is brute force. So this is simply a case of starting with A, 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 and then A, 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 B, and A, 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 C, and so on for different character sets. If we assume there's going to be some subset of passwords that um, use only lowercase letters, we can brute force those very quickly, especially if they're not very long. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run, a hack, I run, a, run an attack on these passwords of, let's say, seven character passwords, all with lowercase letters. Okay, so that's like this. So it's uh, hashcat attack mode uh, three, which is brute force, example naught dot hash, the hash file, and then my mask, which tells me what character sets am I going to use. So L is a lowercase letter, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lowercase letters. Thinking. There we go. So it's done it. Okay. If I scroll up, those are the passwords it found. Okay. Not very many because there aren't very many, luckily for these users, lowercase only passwords, seven of them. But it went through the whole combination of lowercase letters at seven length in, you know, a second, which isn't great. Right. So we step it up a notch. Now we say, right, okay, let's do eight characters. So we just add another L and we run it and 40 billion attempts per second. Here they go and they just, they just keep coming, right? Each of these lines is a hash and the associated password has been cracked. So what it means is at some point it's tried MyCubana, the combination of letters that spell MyCubana, it's hashed it and found, oh, that does match one of the ones in our dictionary, in our, in our hash file. So we will put that in our output, right? Okay, so let's just step it up a little bit further, right? Some passwords, for example, will have um, two digits at the end. Okay. The vast majority of passwords that have numbers in have one or two digits at the end, maybe four, because they're dates. So let's say we say six character passwords with two digits at the end. Okay. Uh, here we go. Ah, oh, there were only a few of those, but we found them. There they are. This is a good start, right? It's very, very quick. It starts to slow down as you increase the number of characters. So. When you're doing a brute force, sort of naive brute force uh, attack like this, then you're using the number of characters in your character set to the power of the length of your password. In this case, there are 26 lowercase digits, 26, to the power of seven for our one where we were trying seven passwords. And then for, uh, let's say, six character passwords with um, two digits on the end, it's going to be 26 to the power of six, multiplied by 10 to the power of two. This is the status of the last attack I did, and it had this many passwords to crack, and it's done them all, and it was doing it at 38 billion hashes per second, which is why MD5 is not usable in any sense anymore, ever. Don't use it. Okay, is that clear yet? Okay, so this is a start, right? Now the problem is that first of all, you know, I only get a few hashes each time because it, you know, this is only 6,000 passwords. If for a LinkedIn 40 million password database, you get a lot like this. But 
it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of work for me to do this. There are ways of generating these masks automatically and iterating through them to try all the different combinations. The other thing is that once we start getting to nine or 10 character passwords, even for this machine, it starts to become impractical, particularly if people are using larger character sets. So consider that this seven length password is 26 to the seven. Well, if you're using lower and uppercase, it's going to be 26 times two to the seven, okay, which is uh, 52, 52 to the 7, right? Put me on the spot. No, right? 52 to the 7, okay? And then if you add symbols, it's more, and it's something like, if you're having symbols and numbers as well, it's going to be somewhere around 90 to the, to the 7, each depending on your character set. So that's too much, right? Even for this. At 7 length, it might be feasible. At 8 length, it starts to get pretty difficult if you're using symbols. And at 9, it's still currently not really doable, even for MD5, okay? Because that's how big the search space is. But most password cracking these days doesn't work this way. Okay, this is a start and you can pick up the really rubbish passwords. So if your password is six characters long, it's being cracked right now and it's being cracked quickly because we can go through all the six character passwords in a fraction of a second. For longer passwords, we have to make some assumptions about the way that people choose passwords. So obviously the password password or indeed password one is actually nine characters, you know, which brute force is pretty good but it's not good because it's just the sort of number one password to be used. And so on the top of your list of hypothetical passwords, it should be right at the top and the first one you try. Okay, so this is what a dictionary attack does. We have a dictionary of a list of commonly used words or commonly used passwords, and then we try those. And then we manipulate them slightly with rules and we try them again. And we append them to other words and we try them again. And we do lots of different combinations of things and try them again. And um, it's pretty scary, right? It's much more effective than brute force. And so it's the current, current way that things are done. The hashing rate goes down a bit because you're loading dictionaries and doing word manipulations, but it's still pretty quick. So let's show you an example dictionary. So this dictionary has common passwords that have been cracked from other sources. There are other password lists like the RockU list and soon the LinkedIn list, I'm sure, which will have a big impact because they are real passwords that people are actually using. So if you make a word list out of those passwords, that's going to be really effective. Let's run this example dictionary over our passwords, but now let's just manipulate it a bit to make it a little bit more, um, well, scary is one way of looking at it. Right, so hashcat, but this time we're gonna run in attack mode zero, which is straight dictionary attack, okay? If I did that against my example dictionary we've got, then it will probably find, you know, a couple. It's very quick because it's not that many. So it's already finished and it found uh, one, this chat with 13 Lexon. So what that's telling me is there's only one guy who happened to have the same password as in the word list. Now that's quite common because, I mean, in a really big database, you're gonna have a lot of people who have password and password 1234 and 1234 and so on. All those people are gonna be found this way. But what we really wanna do is mix up the, the, the dictionary a little bit, swap a few letters around. So what these rules do, they do obvious things like they replace I with a, the, a number one, or they replace E with a three, or put an at in instead of an and or something, you know. They mix it up a bit, common password substitutions, leet speak, weird things like this that people think are very secure. And in fact, they've just got rules to just completely defeat them. Toggling case up and down. You know, if a password's viable, then the same password with the first letter as uppercase, also probably viable, right? So you do all of these things and there are, there are rules to do this. Now, one of my, one of the, um, if, if someone does a lot of password cracking because maybe it's their job, which is a kind of a weird job, but people do do it, a security experts and stuff. If you're really into this, then you'll have your own dictionaries and your own rules. I'm not using them today. I don't have my own dictionaries, my own rules, because fun as this is, mostly I have normal work to do. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in a rule set called dive.rule, right? Now, I don't know who dive is. I expect it's an alias of some hacker somewhere. Um, he's got quite a good rule set that works quite nicely with this hash file, okay? So let's run it. And what this is gonna do is go through all of the rules in turn and for each rule, it's going to go through the whole dictionary and try all those different combinations against these hashes. And here they come. So that was about a thousand hashes we just got, which is a little bit worrying. Some of them are rude, right? I've scrolled past those, okay? Because some people have rude passwords. Those passwords are bad passwords because rude words are also in these dictionaries, right? So if you think you're being clever by putting swear words in your password file, you're actually just making it weaker, okay? These are some not absolutely terrible passwords in some sense. Most of them are lowercase with a few numbers. Liana Drian, which might be a name, is okay, but probably 
a similar word was in the dictionary and it got manipulated in some way, some letters got swapped around and suddenly it was cracked. So we've, we've had some luck, we've done a bit of brute force, we've done um, a basic dictionary attack with a few rules just to mix it up and we've got some passwords. So far I've cracked I think about 1700 passwords out of about 6,500. Right? Some of these passwords aren't crackable in the sense that you could be here for days and still have a few, some left. But I think I've previously got to about 60 or 70% fairly easily. Um, so how can we get even better? Well, we use a better dictionary. That's the key. Um, this example dictionary is fine. It's not very long, you know, so some passwords are going to be in it. But as you remember, we, we ran it and it didn't find many passwords. It, ran, it found some when we ran it through some rules, uh, but it didn't find a lot. So what we really want to do is find a list of actual passwords that people are using in real life and use that. Now, luckily, these leaks happen all the time. And so passwords are being just dumped out onto the internet all the time. So there's this password list called RockU, uh, which is uh, a bit of a game changer in password cracking, if that's a thing, right? Um, and, and basically it's 14 million or so passwords, I think, um, actually leaked from a proper database of real passwords that people were using. It was, I think it was a gaming service or something like this, and then it got leaked. Um, and the point is that if you run the RockU database over these hashes, you start to really get results because there's just much more interesting passwords in the RockU database. There's just many more of them. If I run the same thing I did before, but I pass it over the RockU dot, uh, dictionary, so I'm doing the exact same thing before, same rule manipulations, passing over the RockU dictionary, we should get many more passwords. Should we see? Okay. So it's just compiling the CUDA, and then off it goes. And here they come and they're just going to keep coming, right? There's a lot more because we've got lots and we've got many rules and we've got many um, 14 million passwords in this list. It's going to take quite a lot longer to do, okay? So, it, but it's pretty fast. If I pause it and if we look at the status, so we're calculating now in total about eight to 10,000 mega hashes per second. So about four times slower because of all the dictionary manipulation it's having to do. But it's still pretty quick. So you said compiling the CUDA. Now I, I've heard of CUDA mentioned in terms of graphics cards before. What, what does that mean? Uh, so uh, CUDA is, a, is an NVIDIA. Um, I mean, actually, Hashcat can work on AMD cards as well. But what it basically does is it compiles a, a C-like intermediate language that tells the graphic card what to do. Normally, a graphic... So CUDA in detail is for a different video. But normally what a graphics card does is basically take a load of vertices in your world, transform them into front of your camera and render them to the screen very, very quickly. And the reason it does it quickly is because it maybe has 2,800, 300, 3,000 processors all doing the same basic stuff. It's essentially taking the RockU list, manipulating it using the rules and testing these words for passwords um, at a rate of 8 to 10,000 million per second. 8 to 10,000? Yeah. 10 billion per second, right? I just, it's the way it's written here, so I keep saying 8,000 million, 8 billion, right? 8 billion per second. So that's 8 billion attempts. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it'll try password one, then it will try password two, then it will try password three with a capital P, and so on and so forth for much more complicated passwords. And we've already, I mean, I've paused it, and we've already got 3,000 now. We had 1,700, so we've got 1,300 in, in, I ran it for about 10 seconds. And, and if I keep running it, so I keep resuming, um, they're just gonna, they're gonna keep coming, right? And some of these passwords are really, really hard to crack by brute force or by normal dictionary. And this RockU has changed everything in the sense that it's just so varied that you just get passwords that you think are really good. If I pause it and we look at a couple of the passwords, I mean, this one, NIK, 2106, 1989, right? You could guess that that because it's, got, it's the guy's um, date, but it's been found in the dictionary. Space lightning is quite a long one, but it's two words put together, so that's not secure, right? So it's been found, and so on and so forth. Lawrence 0901, even if 0901 is completely random, you, you're gonna get caught because you've used your name, right? So um, we can just keep going, we can keep going with this, and they'll just keep coming. If I look at the, how long we've got left, we've, we've done 18%, and we've cracked another 200 since I've been talking. So it's just gonna keep going uh, and finish off the, the database. So if, like MD5, you are doing fairly basic things. You can plough through these jobs. And in this case, I'm doing it with however many cores per, per GPU, with four GPUs, um, which is a little bit, a little bit worrying. Um, I mean, they're still going. My current, my current count is, I'm 47% through this particular attack. I could use different rules. There are other rules, like toggling case rules and things. 
Um, I've got three, three and a half thousand now, nearly. Uh, of the, so nearly half of the passwords, right? And some of these passwords are good. So I guess for the people watching, you've got to think, how good are your passwords? Are your passwords better than half the people in this list, right? And if they aren't, you, that's probably the next thing you should do, <laughs> is change them, you know. I mean, XKCD alluded to this, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You know, it didn't necessarily answer every question, but it did get a good message across. And then there's other aspects, you know, should you reuse passwords and, and so on.